Hi, I'm Jacques Pépin. Usually, I'm pretty down to earth. I rarely go in for fancy clothes or flashy cooking. But every so often, it's fun to do something really classy and a little unusual. Our menu today is fashionable, chic, and still very good for you. Saute sweet water trout with tomatoes and olives, a succulent grilled quail served with an unusual grain called quinoa with pumpkin seeds and currants, and a delicious no-fat raspberry granité for dessert. It's a surprisingly easy and elegant dinner. Coming up on Today's Gourmet. Sometime at home, you know, I'm in the mood to cook something chic, a bit different, to demystify often what people consider complicated cooking, you know. Often French is considered a very complicated. Uh, and today we are going to do very classic dish trout, for example, we're going to grill quail. We're going to do quinoa, which is a special type of grain, you know, unusual. And we're going to do a raspberry granite to finish, which is terrific. And what we want to do first is to start with our trout. And I have trout here, those are raised trout. Of course, you buy them at the market fresh. Now they are very easy to come along with and very easy to handle. Uh, I buy them often. You buy them live from even the supermarket and they can kill them right there for you. And you, all you have to do is to, usually the fishmonger is going to eviscerate them for you. All you have to do is pat them dry a little bit. Those are Rambo trout, so-called, you know, type. Usually that's the raised type. Uh, they also raise the brook trout as well as uh, the brown. But the most common in this one, to so a little bit of salt and uh, pepper on top. And in there, I am going to put a tablespoon of butter and a dash of canola oil again, you know, we use, which is our uh, uh, monounsaturated oil, actually the least saturated of all oil. Pepper on top of this, and we start cooking. Those are, you know, about 12 ounces trout, good weight. We put them flat, I have a nice pan here, oval pan, which, you know, fit the configuration of the fish, so they are nice to cook. They will cook about four minutes on medium to high uh, temperature there. You know, shake them occasionally. And while this is cooking, or start cooking, we're going to move to the second dish, which is our quinoa. It's unusual, it's a very high protein grain from Inca origin. It comes from Peru. And uh, there it was used, uh, it was part of tradition, it was part of, it has uh, all the type of implication, like religious implication and so forth. And those are those tiny little grain like this, you know. And uh, they kind of become transparent when they cook, as you will see. We're going to do that with onion saute. And we have a pumpkin seed, which are very good there. And those tiny baby dry raisins that we call current. You know, they are not current, real current, because the current doesn't dry. This is the resins. So first, we are going to do the onion, and this has to be sauté first. We chop the onion. This is about two ounces onion. You could have a bit more. Actually, you could put some leek also for color in it, or another type of onion, you know, in the onion family. You can use some shallot, you can use some uh, scallion, you know, and all that is going to be fine. You have to be imaginative a little bit in your cooking. So what we do with this, we start sauteing this, and we are going to put a little bit of olive oil in there, olive oil or another type of oil, and saute that first for a couple of minutes. You know, you want those nuts too brown, you know, a little bit. So that will take a couple of minutes to brown. I like to do that type of base. Actually, sometimes I use I use uh, other type of nuts, you know. Uh, the, those pumpkin seeds are nice because not only are they beautiful and green, they have a nice crunch to it. We're going to cook this with uh, chicken stock also. So after this cooks a couple of minutes, you can saute it. You don't want the onion really to brown there. Then you put your quinoa into it. And you want to stir it nicely so that 
it really coat, you know, the oil and the, in the bottom will really coat the grain nicely. The same technique that you do for uh, rice. Then we put our dry currant in there. Nice color. You have a lot of fiber in there. And the chicken stock. That's it. Come to a strong boil right away. You can cover it with a lid. You want to lower the heat so it boils very gently. And you cook that for approximately 18 minutes. You know, that's about the time that it will take to absorb. I have a cup and a half of chicken stock here. And now let's look at our trout. I think they are about cooked on one side, so I can flip them over. You can see they are beautifully brown. There, I can actually, you know, if I want to get them moist inside, cover them a little while for a couple of minutes and lower the heat, which is the right way. By doing that, it puts some moisture in there and then they kind of steam and brown at the same time. And during that time, we're going to do the garnish for it. Uh, you can, you know, the classic way, what we call poisson or the fish meunier, you know, that is in the tradition of the baker or the bread baker. Uh, is to, uh, to do it just saute like this with a little bit of mushroom. For us, we have a larger type of garnish. We have tomato here. We have mushroom, of course. We have uh, a, a lemon and black olives. And uh, you can put parsley. In that case, this is chive. What you do with the lemon, we want to use the lemon as a garnish. So I'm cutting the lemon here. That is the whole skin of the lemon, and notice that I'm using my knife in a jigsaw fashion again, you know, to cut all around. I may not need all of the lemon, but it's a nice way of peeling it. And now on that lemon, I want to cut it into dice. So we are going to have little dice of lemon in there. You know, it's a little bit like when you use capers, you know, it's a bit acid and so forth, and that goes well with it. So there, I'm cutting that into stick, and each stick into little dice. Okay, this is about, maybe a bit more, the garnish for our trout here. You know, we use a lot of uh, sweet water fish, you know, where I am. And uh, because at some time of the year, it's hard to get other type of fish, Unfortunately, now, all over the country, you can get trout year-round, which is terrific. We're going to put tomato in there, so cut the tomato in half to expose the seed. Then we press the seed and juice out of it. This one is quite fleshy, which is beautiful. And that we are going to cut into dice. Again, other garnish, you know. My knife. Always sharpen your knife as you go along. For a professional chef, it becomes almost a condition reflex, you know. Sharp knife are important. Actually, what is a sharp knife? A sharp knife is a knife with which you can cut an overripe tomato with. Then it's sharp. You know? So here I have little dice of tomato. That will be first beautiful colored, give me some acidity. I have the chives and I also have uh, those are cured, olive cured type of, uh, of, uh, of olive, you know, saying cure, we call it Moroccan style. Then we put some mushroom there. Here. The mushroom can be cut this way. A couple of mushrooms should uh, be fine. And now let's see whether our trout are ready. Put them on the side by touching them. That gives me an indication of how far ahead they are, you know. And they are getting there maybe another minute or so. During that time, you know, I can show you a decoration that you do with large mushroom when you need pieces like that. You cut the top. The top, you can use it for this, of course. And there, like in our case, I can draw a mushroom, a, a, a fish rather, I'm doing a fish. So I'm drawing a fish with the point of a knife. This way, I mark the fish. I mean, sometimes I draw something else, like a chicken or whatever. And now that the fish is drawn with the point of a knife, I can cut around the fish. That is to remove 
some of the flesh around and put that design into a relief. So now I have a relief of a fish here. I can trim it around and cut the top part of the decoration, meaning that actually what I've taken out of that is only uh, a slice of uh, fish. And I can put a bit of lemon juice on top of it that I have here that will stay white. We can put that other decoration. All those pieces can be added to your recipe so you don't lose anything at all. Okay, so this is the garnish for my fish. And now I want to remove the fish. They're about two, they are brown on the other side also, as you can see. I'm going to lower my heat here a little bit. Put them there, and in the dripping process, I'm going to put those mushrooms to saute. They just get warm, you know? Just basically get warm. And the mushroom, the, I mean the, the tomato on top of it, just so that they get warm. This can go right on top of it. This is it, it doesn't have to cook more than that. The lemon. And now we're ready to serve our trout. Clean up my table a little bit. And we're going to serve on that plate right here. We'll bring the trout and sometimes, you know, people are a bit skirmish about cooking trout and serving it, the whole trout, I like it this way, you know? So if, you, if your guest you think is going to complain a little bit, you can bone out the trout for it. So you cut in the center of the trout here, and with your knife, pull out, you see, pull out the, the filet. This is a quarter of the trout, bone out. I, now, with my knife, I pull out the other side. You see, it slide right of the bone, which indicates that it's cooked anyway. And now I take the tail of the trout, I lift up the bone right here at the end, take the tail and remove that old bone and add together, which now I can get away with. All I have to do is to replace that on top, that piece on top here. The other filet on the other side is a bit nicer, so I will turn it upside down to serve it on this side, bone out, and here of course you can do it into individual into an individual plate, you know. You bring that on top of it, and with a nice spoon, you can serve all of your garnish here and around. That's it. With a little bit, maybe, of cleaning around. The green on top of it, and here it is, a classic, chic, elegant dish. to make a very elegant dessert. No fat in it, no cholesterol, and a lot of flavor with raspberry, nice ripe raspberry. And of I use raspberry preserve rather than using sugar. There is sugar in it, but it intensifies the flavor. A bit of uh, lemon juice. So very simply, we put, this is the way you do sherbet. We're doing a granite, which is really close to the same thing than a sherbet. And I'm putting this in there with a little bit of the lemon juice for acidity, and we're going to process it mm -hmm. this way. Won't take long, a few seconds. Now, now we want to strain it, because remember the seed in the raspberry and in the raspberry preserve. Now, if you don't object to seed, it's fine, but usually, I would tend to like to strain it. So I strain it. One way to clean up the knife, you know, of your food processor is to put it back when it's empty, process it one second, and take the knife out. Then it's clean. The speed of the machine will clean up the knife. Take all the rest of it. And you know, most people, when they strain this now, are going to spread with the spatula. I don't do this. I bang it. You see, if you push with the spatula in it, what you do actually, you push each seed into a little hole. And uh, within, uh, you know, a couple of 10-15 uh, seconds, the whole thing is plugged. 
So by doing what I'm doing here, I'm banging it to make actually the seed jump like this so they don't pluck the hole. At the end, only at the end, do I press it a little bit at the end because and you know what I do, even with those raspberry seed that I have left in it, I could spend a bit more time on it. Even those raspberry seed, I put them in vinegar sometimes. People want to do raspberry vinegar, you, you can put that in vinegar. So this, which is now nice and smooth, we freeze. You know, something, well, you don't have to do it in there. I do it in there because it goes faster. But you can put them in a bowl and freeze them for a couple of hours until it get a bit solid, not completely. And I have one which is done right here. And this we put back in the food processor at that point here to emulsify it a little bit. You see, it is not completely hard, but hard enough. So I put it back in there. Just to give it a bit more texture. And what, by doing this, what happened actually, you put some air into it and the air will make it fluffy and a bit nicer. It softens it a little bit too, and that's all there is to it. You put it back now, it's like a slush, you know, and it's actually very good this way. That slush, you can put it back in your freezer, and then when it gets very hard in your freezer, in two, three hours, you can scoop it directly into your, into your glass. I like to serve it in glass to uh, serve it, you know, maybe with a little spring of mint or something like that on top. And now we want to go to the quail. We are born in quail for our first course today. And I have quail right here with the garnish that I'm going to do with it. I have bone out quail here. You can buy them like this on the market. And I have one which need to be bone out. And I can show to you how to bone them out. The quail, the little bird, is being held at the joint of the shoulder right here. And I can cut the skin, of the, the, the skin of the back to go faster and cut here at the joint of the shoulder. I can feel on each side, if I wiggle my knife a little bit, I am in the joint. And all I do here is to pull it out this way, pull it out the other way. Then I bring it down, pushing it down like this, breaking the 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 back leg at the joint, the joint of the hip right there, and I break it out and pull it out. And basically, in a few seconds, the quail is bone eyed to that extent. I can leave the bone of the back or push the bone this way to remove at least what we call the thigh bone. I have here this one, and the other one again, grabbing it this way, putting your finger and pushing it down like that to clear out the bone, you see? Very easy way of doing it and I can break the bone at the joint here. Now it's completely bone out, leg, except for the drum. I have a little bit of the filet here that I can remove with my finger to put on top of it here. And they are noticed that there, you know, in that boning process, I don't really use, use too much of a knife. Now I have bone out that quail by opening the back. Sometimes I do it without opening the back. You can do one or the other and I can reform it this way. That's it. It's much easier to eat. So now what we are going to do is the marinade for it. And uh, this is a mixture of garlic. I'm going to do it in that tiny food processor here. It works well. I have a clove of garlic in there. I have a shallot. We're going to cut that red onion that we call a shallot. Some jalapeno pepper, hot pepper. I mean, this is uh, depending how, uh, how you like it. You know, if you, if you like it hot or not. And we put in there what we call gnoc mam. It's a fish sauce, uh, you know, that is used in different cooking, particularly Vietnam. And a little bit of water. That's it. And we do the marinade here. Just process it for uh, a few seconds. And of course, you can do that ahead, you know, and put it directly on your bird here. I mean, in a gratin dish or something like this. You can marinate your bird. It's a very pungent, very pungent type of uh, taste, you know, that you have. And of course, even though you should theoretically leave it for a while, what I'm going to do is to cook it right away. I put it on my grill here, and it's quite hot 
on the grill, putting the quail. They cook a few minutes on each side, and you can keep that marinade here to put it back into it, you know, for taste later on. And while this is cooking, I want to tell you a little bit about butter. I know that in our cooking I've cut a great deal butter, but I still use butter. When I use it, especially at the table, I like it to look nice, and I want to show you how to make it so it looks nice. To start with, when you serve, we, if you have butter at the table, look, I put it in small container, it's tightly covered with a piece of plastic. Otherwise, it pick up every taste that you have in your refrigerator. So do it until the last moment, and after that, you can decorate the top if you want with a, a fork like this. I mean, you can put a little bit of uh, red in it, like I have the piece of a uh, tomato skin here, you know, for color. You know, a bit of green, if you want. All of that is fine, just for color. I have the, the, the leaf of uh, tarragon, or in that case, uh, watercress. That looks good. But one elegant way of doing it is to doing a flour with the butter and a knife. So what you do, you scrape the top of the butter to get that texture that you roll on itself to do a base here. Now look at that, this is the base of the flour that I can put here. And I do another swirl, which is going to be the inside. You see the inside of that flour, which I put it there. You can see it, beautiful. The way to keep this, the best way is to drop it in ice cold water. It gets immersed in the water, it doesn't pick up any taste. And then it gets very hard and you can use it. Remember that butter is caloric. I have not quite, maybe a tablespoon there. A tablespoon of butter is about 100 calories, less, a bit less than oil. I have here some paprika. And what you can do is if you want to roll the edge in the paprika, just to give another effect to your flowers here. And you see, for example, on that one, I can make a little hole in the center, place that in and you really have a beautiful presentation of butter for your table. And now I want to see whether my quail are cooked. So let's get here. The quail are doing good. I like to have a very strong grill. They are cooked nicely brown. I like them nice and char like this. Hmm, that's beautiful and it smells good, especially with the, with the gnocchi mam in it. And what we want to finish now, we want to finish our quinoa that we had before here. And that quinoa, that is very fluffy now, as you can see, that beautiful grain, you know? So it's fluffy, we want to arrange it on a plate. Remember, I have pumpkin seed in it, I have uh, those tiny uh, resins that we call uh, currant, and that we are going to put uh, other decoration. So I put some of the quinoa on top here, spread it. This is a terrific grain, you know, I spread it again to put my quail in the middle, as it is here, I think it's beautiful. Then I can get the quail, have a nice one here, right in the middle of it, and maybe a bit of what we had at the beginning, the decoration, those resins, a bit more on top, pumpkin seed, Maybe a bit of the green if you want to put tarragon, uh, I mean uh, watercress in it. And here it is, a classic elegant dish, the quail and quinoa. And now it's time to enjoy our classic chic dinner. You enjoy that, of course, with Fran. I don't cook like that for myself alone, but I like to cook like that for Fran. We really have a very nice menu today, I think. Under 950 calories for all that we have. We have those trout. You know, again, sweet water fish, but a fatty fish, which is very good for you with that whole array of different types of vegetable. We have the quail, a small quail, you know, those are unusual ingredients, maybe the pumpkin seed, the quinoa, you may or may not have cooked it before, but you shouldn't be afraid of it. As you see, it's quite easy and nice, beautiful to look at. The salad, and of course, that great dessert of puree of raspberry, uh, which is, there's no fat in it, and on top of this, we put a little bit of framboise, you know, that I like, except for the children, maybe, of course. This is a real raspberry brandy, you know, of very high quality, which will really bring the taste up. And with this, maybe a glass of upper burgundy. Uh, we have here a 
Corton, which is upper Burgundy. This is a terrific wine, fruity, which will go well with our meal. I hope you're going to make the dinner, invite some friends, have a great time. I enjoy making it for you. Happy cooking.